Minecraft Monday was one of the most influential weekly esports events of all time, sparking widespread internet memes and causing channels to reach 1 million subscribers. Hosted by Keemstar, host of the internet news show, Drama Alert, the event brought together some of the biggest internet personalities to compete for cash money. Mr. Beast, James Charles, PewDiePie, Ninja, Grand A, Dan TDM, Captain Sparkles, you name it. The event sparked a lot of drama in its time, but also brought a lot of people together. After 14 weeks worth of competition, the event has pretty much come to an end. It would be a crime to forget about this tournament and its impact. So today, I will be talking about the history of Minecraft Monday. Twenty nineteen has been a pretty interesting year to say the least. It began in sort of a weird state. Big memes or big chungus and Mafia City. The most popular game was Fortnite. Most of all, the internet's attention was fixated on the most influential internet war to date. PewDiePie vs T series. If you never heard of it, you had to be living under a rock. This was a widespread internet campaign to make sure that the most subscribed YouTuber wasn't overtaken in subscribers by the Indian music label company T-Series. All YouTube data analysts were expecting T-Series to overtake PewDiePie in late October 2018. But then something unexpected happened. Mr. Beast uploaded a video on October 26, 2018, where he bought a lot of ads in his hometown. All these ads were to promote PewDiePie. Although these advertisements themselves probably didn't have much of an impact on the people who encountered them in real life, they served a greater purpose for Mr. Beast to invigorate fans to subscribe to PewDiePie like crazy. This trend caught on and inspired a lot of the biggest content creators of the time to get their fans to go out there and support PewDiePie. Content creators like Markiplier, Logan Paul, and so many more. However, no trend can last forever. Each trend on the internet must at some point come to an end. By February, it was becoming increasingly clear that the end was near. PewDiePie needed to do something and fast. This is when he decided to livestream the holy trinity of children's games. Fortnite, Roblox, then Minecraft. This helped PewDiePie stay afloat for a short amount of time in the race. In the short run, PewDiePie's livestream was simply another livestream. It only put a dent in Minecraft's popularity, but this event was also the first wave of one of 2019's biggest phenomena, Minecraft nostalgia. People who haven't cared about Minecraft in years were suddenly reintroduced to the game, even if for the short amount of time PewDiePie livestreamed. This first wave was very minuscule compared to what was to come. In April of 2019, the Great Subscriber War was finally called off. There were many reasons for this, one of the largest being Felix's unwanted association with the March New Zealand shooting. The internet's obsession with the war came to an end. While all this was going on, Minecraft was making a comeback in the background, and one man seemed to take note. Keemstar announced the creation of a weekly Fortnite tournament on March 7, 2018. This was a massive event in collaboration with UMG Studio, where big YouTubers and streamers would come together and compete for a cash prize. On May 6, Keem made a Twitter announcement about when everyone can find out about the event's details. Not before long, Friday Fortnite became a staple event not only in the Fortnite community, but also around the entire internet. As the event went into full swing, Keemstar dropped a joke about a fake event on July 12th, 2018. What was this fake joke event called? Minecraft Monday. In the tweet's comments, there were people who actually wanted to see this become a real event. Keemstar took notice and made an announcement that if his tweet reached 5,000 retweets, Minecraft Monday would turn into an actual event. In the course of three hours, the tweet reached over 6,000 retweets. However, it doesn't appear that anything actually came of this, and Minecraft Monday remained to live on as a fake event made up as a joke. Some of Keemstar's followers kept telling him to actually make Minecraft Monday a real thing, until he actually responded. In a tweet on April 3rd of this year, Keemstar said, I don't know why you keep asking me to do Minecraft Mondays, but I know this. If I did a Hunger Games tournament, it would bang. Again, 
not much came of this, but it did attract the attention of some YouTubers. Eventually, on June 11th, Keemstar posted a tweet to get an idea of how many people actually wanted Minecraft Monday to be a thing. This tweet got massively popular, accumulating over 23,000 retweets. Just one day later, Keem announced that Minecraft Monday was finally going to be a real event. Keemstar was now on the hunt for who to invite to his Minecraft Hunger Games tournament. He reached out to numerous large YouTubers that he had contact with, he even attempted to hunt for YouTubers who were popular around five years ago. All the while, some decently sized YouTube channels expressed their interest, hoping to get invited too. The first ever Minecraft Monday was set to begin on June 24th, just 13 days after it was declared a real event. Keemstar kept on hunting for participants, needing 10 more players 4 days before. Due to interest, it didn't take long before he decided to expand the number of participants. Keemstar ran into some issues finding a sponsor. A Minecraft server scammed him, but then G Fuel stepped in and sponsored $10,000. This meant that the people on the winning team had the ability to win $5,000 each, a large sum of money for playing Minecraft. The at the time roster was released on June 22nd. Later that day, GameStar made a big announcement that Ninja, the huge Fortnite streamer, would be participating. Who would he team with? Mr. Beast. An hour before the event, the full roster was released to the public. The event was being hyped. Millions of people were eager to watch, and many large YouTubers and streamers were all ready to play. Nothing could spoil the moment, right? Wrong. Not only was the start delayed, but the first round broke. There's two people, uh, Sky and uh, Atos on the left. Here, get off to the right. Oh. What? Did it crash? I think it crashed. Ah! Whoa! Whoa! Praise the Lord! Oh, God bless. Woo! It's okay, it didn't count. The issue was resolved. But it also showed that Keemstar's event was far from perfect. Still, everyone was into the idea of an event where Sky does Minecraft could go head to head against Mr. Beast while running away from Skeppy. The first week was a success. Not everything was perfect, with Ninja even leaving midway. But there wasn't any major complaints or drama. As a matter of fact, if anything, this event brought attention to a certain pig Minecraft YouTuber. Throughout the first week, people in the streamers' stream chats were warning the participants about Technoblade. At first, the players didn't really seem to take this too seriously. Yo, chat. Who should who should we who should we watch out for? Like, who do you guys know yeah, has a know. large knowledge of Hunger Games? I feel I think like it's pretty a lot of people are saying Skeppy and Technoblade. Watch out for really, no, every words? literally everybody saying Technoblade. Everybody. Yeah, Technoblade, they're gonna- or Vic, I'm scared of Vic. Yeah, no, this is our plan. To be fair, Technoblade wasn't the largest YouTuber by any means. He had around 600,000 subscribers, far from the numbers others had, such as Vicstar and Sky Does Minecraft. Technoblade was very well known within the PvP and Hypixel communities, but didn't have much name recognition beyond that. PvP, for those unfamiliar, player versus player, or, you know, players fighting against each other, and Hypixel being the largest server on Minecraft. By dominating the first week, the viewers of all the other streamers were suddenly interested in Technoblade. Searches for Technoblade spiked. While in the first week, Technoblade had a viewership of a few 10,000 at any given moment, his viewership spiked to over 60,000 in the subsequent weeks. Minecraft Monday was the perfect storm for Technoblade getting the spotlight. Not only that, but this week also produced a meme that quickly spread across the internet. Call Me Carson from SMP Live went to open a chest, but it ended up being a trap. Let's go that way, just go that way. Oh, oh, oh. Carson, are you okay? <laughs> no! 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 Carson's reaction spread around the internet with the addition of Joe from Family Guy added into the background. In the end, the winning team was Technoblade and Shotgun Raids. At this point, Keemstar announced that an official public server was going to be made. The server was released on July 1st. One of the major complaints about the event was the team balancing. Was it really fair that some teams had two people with a lot of experience, while others had people 
who had just downloaded the game, Keemstar decided to split the top 5 placing teams from week 1. These people now had to find new teammates. Technoblade chose his friend Tapple to play. However, Keemstar kicked out Tapple for being a Minecraft player and gave Techno an hour to find a new teammate. Techno then chose Ibalistic Squid, which was a bit of a controversial choice. After all, Squid, while not a full-on Minecraft channel by that point, had a lot of Minecraft experience. Still, it was allowed. The even bigger controversy came from Pizza Hut, another one of the players who had to find a new teammate. Week 1 was Minecraft Monday's honeymoon period, where everyone was excited that a bunch of big YouTubers were competing against each other. However, everyone also ignored the fact that the host was Keemstar, a figure who got a lot of backlash in the past for things that he did and said. Pizza Hut did not want to be in an event associated with him. He also decided to post a video describing his thoughts. I will not be participating in any future Minecraft Monday tournaments, and I've also deleted my POV of my Minecraft Monday tournament, both from YouTube and Twitch. The mistake that I'm referring to is something that I broke, what I call responsibility on YouTube as a social media influencer. I've always said at the beginning that I will only take up deals from people whom I trust. I have to have some sort of mutual trust and respect for the person, as well as know that their intentions are in the best interest of my viewers. And that is something that I do not believe the organizer of Minecraft Monday, Keemstar, is. I do not believe that Keemstar has good intentions for his audience or for mine. I do not believe that Keemstar is a good role model or influencer on any social media platform he's a part of. And I frankly do not, I do not believe in barely anything that he does. Our views are entirely contradictory. Keem has done a lot in the past. And it was my fault for participating in a tournament without realizing who I was promoting. I believe I was in some sort of romance period, some sort of butterfly phase where everything just seemed like peaches and rainbows. I was invited to this wonderful deal that it seemed like this epitome of my career, but that doesn't excuse my actions or deter my responsibility uh, to own up to my mistake. So again, I'm sorry. Needless to say, Keemstar was not happy. Both of them got into a back and forth argument on Twitter, where Keemstar insisted that Pete was kicked out for not finding a teammate and was angry about that. This drama did not really persist for that long, but it also served as a reminder that the host is not the most well-liked figure. On a more positive note, the big news of the week was a certain team of big YouTubers, PewDiePie with James Charles. Everyone went after them, hoping to use them as clickbait for views. James Charles would continue to play in the event every week, while PewDiePie never played in it again. The winning team was Ibalistic Squid and Technoblade. Again, people were very upset that they were allowed to team together. So from then on out, Technoblade's teammates were always heavily vetted to make sure that they don't even know how to jump in Minecraft. Okay, that's hyperbole, but you get the point. To balance teams, Technoblade was paired with Chris from Mr. Beast in the following week. Moving on, remember how I talked about the public server earlier? Well, guess what? Keemstar announced that there would soon be ranks. People who buy these ranks on the server would have an opportunity to join the event as fans. This announcement wasn't immediately a big deal, but it would have an impact on the tournament. Week 3 saw perhaps the biggest change in Minecraft Monday history. Now, there would be multiple different minigames. There were viewers who were upset that by having 10 rounds of the Hunger Game, people who were good at PvP like Technoblade and Vicstar would always dominate the entire event. Now there were games such as Bingo and Find the Button. This did not stop Technoblade from dominating the event, but having Chris, a non-Minecraft player, as a teammate, that meant that he would have difficulty carrying his team into first place. In the end, the winners were CS Hoop and Super Trads. Week 4 is perhaps best described by the big controversy of the week. Minecraft Monday has been making a bit of an effort to balance teams, but they never really looked that much into the players, made apparent by Tapple being kicked out only an hour before week 2. It was then that Vicstar hashed an idea. You see, one big Minecraft YouTuber who hasn't played in the event up to this point was Preston Plays. While Preston used to focus on just Minecraft videos, in recent times, he's diversified into Roblox, Fortnite, and real-life videos. Within the Minecraft community, Preston has a reputation of being good at the game, but people outside it don't really know that. At least, until watching this video. Vicstar told the people in charge to add Preston as his teammate, calling him Rusty, insisting that Preston used to be good at the game, but not anymore. 
This got all the serious contestants upset. Not furious, because it's just a game. Unsurprisingly, Vicstar and Preston won. As you'd expect, Vicstar and Preston were split the following week. In week 5, there was a new kid on the block. You see, as I mentioned earlier, people who bought ranks from the Minecraft Monday server had a chance to compete in the real thing. This week, the team of randoms as they come to be known consisted of Player and Fire Breath Man. Fire Breath Man caught everyone by a storm, with people referring to him as the new Technoblade. He was the dominant player without a doubt. Of all the random players who've ever participated, he's by far the most remembered. While Fire Breath Man was dominating, there was a certain team that finally was in a good position to win, Skeppy and Bad Boy Halo. For the past few weeks, they've been trailing first place. Now it was their time to shine, just as long as they could outplay the randoms. After a hard fought week, the winners ended up being Skeppy and Bad Boy Halo. As usual for this tournament, the week did not come without controversy. You see, Technoblade's teammate was Call Me Carson. Call Me Carson was trying to make a joke that he would team kill Technoblade for the greater good of all the other competitors. But the joke was not that well executed and people actually believed him. He also tried a joke where he would only speak to Technoblade through a soundboard. But a lot of Technoblade's fans also did not like that joke. Don't give him any hey, reason. Technoblade. Hello, are you ready to win TNT run? Yes. I'm ready to win video games. They, uh, okay. They changed they changed TNT run a bit in week four. I don't know how, but the blocks disappear a bit earlier. So just hold down spacebar the entire time. Just never let go. Okay. Never let go. Sure. I'm glad we could come to an understanding. Yes. <laughs> Is this a sound word? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, Technoblade. Oh god, the soundboard's been set up. No. These are all cookie-cutter responses to avoid you from calling me cringe. Excellent. This is actually how I record my okay. Skywars videos. I just have like eight memes that I, I can't think of new jokes, so I just repeat them. It's all soundboard, chat. It's all soundboard. Sure. Sounds good. Sure. Carson, this is really awkward. All my viewers are going to leave. Please. These are all cookie-cutter responses Car to avoid Carson, you Carson, you need to... The, the content, please. Please. Sounds good. I'm just, I'm just gonna deafen. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I'll undeafen after TNT run. I can't. I can't do this. Welcome guys to another solo commentary. I don't know what's going on, man. Technoblade continued to play the tournament in the solo commentary. Carson hovered around in other voice chats and got a lot of backlash from the viewers of another streamer in the tournament, XQC. Carson got a lot of hate and eventually decided to leave midway through the tournament. After chatting afterwards, Technoblade said that Carson didn't really seem to care. Still, it was a huge conversation amongst Minecraft Monday fans. In other news for the week, Technoblade won all three rounds of TNT run, starting a win streak that a lot of people would pay attention to. A lot of non-Technoblade fans were upset that Technoblade was too good at all the minigames, so Keemstar decided to add Build Battle in the following week. Build Battle isn't necessarily the most competitive game, but Technoblade told Keem that he wasn't good at building, so yeah, that's how they decided to balance everything. Week 6 saw the one-off appearance of another notable YouTube creator, Jaden Animations, who was teamed with I Has Cupquake. Other than that, the week was relatively uneventful. Technoblade continued his TNT run win streak, expanding it to 6 wins in a row. Not only that, but Technoblade won again, teamed with Jay Schlatt from SMP Live. While week 6 was the most uncontroversial week of Minecraft Monday in a while, week 7 blew all the other controversies out of the water. Build Battle was broken, which meant that most teams couldn't build. Keemstar declared for Build Battle points to be removed, but they weren't. TNT Run was changed to have decaying blocks in order to prevent Technoblade from winning. However, this also ruined everyone else's experience in the process. Skeppy died in a Hunger Games battle because a healing soup was broken. A lot of players were experiencing lag. The rapidly growing YouTuber, Dream, made a video suggesting that a lot of the issues were made possible because of a hacker destroying everything on the public server, causing the people in charge for the week to be too distracted to fix the problems in the actual event. Keep in mind that this is when the main developer, Lake B, was on vacation. I could go on describing every little detail of what went wrong, but in the end, no one knew who the legitimate winners were. In the official leaderboard, Skeppy and Bad Boy Halo won. If Keemstar's announcement that build battle points would be removed was actually put into effect, Technoblade and Junkie Janker would have won. 
It was a huge mess, so in the end, the prize money just ended up going to charity. In week 8, there were some strong teams such as Skeppy and Bad Boy Halo, Captain Sparkles and Beijing Canadian, Technoblade and Dan TDM, and the random team, MC Morgan Plays and Needle XD. In the end, the winners, for the first ever time, were the random. This got them into a lot of controversy. You see, for the first few rounds, they played using the Badline claims. While none of the contestants were upset or even had any objections to this, a lot of the viewers went ballistic and sent them hate. Thing is, other players have used a Badline client in the past, and they were declared the legitimate winners, but that didn't stop them from being bombarded. Still, they won. Week 9 ran relatively smoothly. One new game mode added in this week was Sky Wars, which was not super well received due to it having a big map. Still, this was an intense competition. We also got to see the first person to participate to have previously made a video about the event, Dream. In the end, the victory was taken by Skeppy, teamed with Vicstar, making it their third and second wins respectively. Week 10 fixed the Skywars map, which noticeably resembled a map on the Hypixel server network. Vilza and Technoblade dominated, not only winning all three rounds of Skywars, but also winning the entire event. By now, Minecraft Monday had gained a reputation as the must-join event for any Minecraft YouTuber. However, viewership quotas were not being met. Keemstar had made a rule that all participants must either A. have at least 2,000 concurrent viewers per stream, or B. team with somebody who gets a ton of concurrent viewers, such as 10,000. Thing is, these rules were not being enforced. Just like with Tapple, Keemstar made some adjustments hours before the event began, kicking people out including Ex Nestoria, Time Dio, and A6D. Some people had no idea if they were being allowed to participate, such as Bad Boy Halo. A6D found out that Keem didn't want him in anything else hosted by him, so A6D rebelled and played in the event anyway. Keemstar acted like he never kicked out A6D, which got A6D upset. This led to a back and forth on Twitter between A6D and Keemstar. Keemstar kept insisting that A6D was never kicked out, while A6D kept on providing his evidence for having been kicked out. This led to anyone having strong connections with A6D deciding that they would never participate in Minecraft Monday again, including Skeppy, A6D himself, Bad Boy Halo, Shotgun Raids, Spifey, and Dream. A6D also made a highly viewed video. But not to, like, two hours before, when Every, everyone is already hyped about it. Like, it just ruined the whole event. At that moment, I got kicked out of the group and I never had any conversation in private or public with Keemstar. Everyone starts their stream, uh, their, their stream except me, but I don't really know why I got the idea to sneak in since I was still whitelisted. I show up nowhere even on the UMG team list on, on their stream. Then something kind of funny happens. Uh, I, I get a message saying, are you actually gonna play? I was told you were out of anything Kim related. That just made me want to start my stream and, and just stand up against this guy that is Kim. So I started streaming. I went back today in the UMG event VOD and then I see in the chat something from Kim. A6D and Skeppy are teaming. I didn't know at that point because I was on stream on my side. I got up to 4k viewers at the beginning and see the message in my chat from Kim. From viewership, GG. I don't know if he actually just tried to pretend like nothing happened and just be like, oh, he got the viewers, I never kicked him out. But that kind of put me off at the moment, even if I was like hiding it on, on my stream. Like, he was literally two faced. Like, YouTuber Pika Clicks who hosts an event called Winner Takes All, decided to begin a new event called Minecraft Sunday. It was eventually changed to Minecraft Saturday, but the important thing to note is that its aim was to be like Minecraft Monday, but better, with staff that are actually paid and can put in a ton of time. Thing is, it would take a while for this event to begin, and there were mixed thoughts about it at the time. At the end of week 11, the winners were German streamers, BossDGHD, and Aqua the Cheater. However, the event would never be the same again. Week 12 was better organized, with Keemstar announcing the participants during the week. Notably, Ex Nestorio, who was kicked out from the previous week, was now set to play. The A6D vs Keemstar drama continued, but not to the same extent as the week before. In the end, the winners were XQC and Moxie, a team that has significantly improved from their first time competing. Week 13 was different from all the other weeks, because of one person, Mr. Beast. Hey guys, I just got off the phone with uh, Mr. Beast and he is making a video 
on Minecraft Monday today. So if you are lucky enough to be participating in today's Minecraft Monday, Mr. Beast uh, is gonna be jumping on the Discord and issuing individual challenges to uh, some of the players to win thousands and thousands of dollars in donations. Uh, so super excited about it. Just wanted to let you guys know, Minecraft Monday starts in two hours. Mr. Beast announced that Technoblade would be bounty for $15,000, a greater amount of money than the actual prize pool. Whoever killed Technoblade in the last round of Hunger Games would get that money. However, if Techno won, he himself would get the money. After some intense fighting, the winners of the bounty ended up being Bajan Canadian and Jerome ASF. Also, just like the last week, XQC and Moxie won the event. Little did anyone know, but that marked the last full week of Minecraft Monday. The following week was cancelled by Keemstar due to TwitchCon. Then Keemstar realized that TwitchCon was actually the next week, so the next week was cancelled too. During this time, the main developer Lake B left to pursue other things. With the developer, for pretty much the event's entire history now gone, the new person would have some big shoes to fill. This takes us to week 14, the week of disaster. Each team went into the first round, which was Spleef. They didn't really like the map, which was redesigned to prevent exploits that some of the competitors messed around with the previous time around. Not to mention, the ice from the floor melted, causing the game to turn into a stalemate of people hiding in water, just as no one thought anything could get worse. The same hacker from week 7 went in and banned everyone. In an ironic twist of events, James Charles noticed that the hacker showed his own IP during the stream, so the hacker ended up getting DDoSed. The participants played on Hypixel instead, which the viewers seemed to enjoy. Not that long after all this went down, Keemstar announced that Minecraft Monday would be on hiatus until November. There's this misconception, right, that I'm making thousands and thousands, millions of dollars doing these tournaments. No, <laughs> no. Bro, I'm putting in hours and hours and hours in each week. Like, people don't understand the amount of work to organize something like this is insane. So why would I do a ton of work and like not get paid basically anything because it's fun because i love it but i like putting on a show for the community i like that you guys love this shit. and you know i just i love it but quite frankly like we've been cutting so many corners on minecraft monday like money should be spent here and there and same thing with friday fortnite and the reason why we don't spend the money and put money into it is because we're not making anybody so basically what is happening now is i have two two companies maybe three companies that are fighting over taking over my tournaments and replacing um, UMG that are offering some crazy money. And like last Friday and today's Minecraft Monday all could have been like way better if I had money. So I feel like it's just stupid to just keep doing these events on a shoestring budget when like in a couple months, I'm gonna have a lot of money. I'll be able to raise my price pools. I might actually get paid for putting all this work in to do these tournaments. So I'm thinking the return of Minecraft Monday and Friday Fortnite will be in November. Some of the players from Minecraft Monday decided to play an organized game of Battledome to substitute for the event. They even invited Lego Maestro, a Minecraft Monday news channel. After Battledome, they went onto the Hypixel server and essentially had a repeat of the previous week. Ever since all this went down, people have been pretty much silent about Minecraft Monday. Lego Maestro continues the tradition of Minecraft Monday Hypixel with big YouTubers, although all the actual Minecraft Monday players have pretty much just stopped doing it at this point. A couple weeks ago, the spotlight was taken by Minecraft Saturday, that event I talked a little about earlier. It had a lot of the same participants as Minecraft Monday. Not only that, but another event called Minecraft Championship has also appeared. Stay tuned for news on that. And that event also attracts a lot of the same people. Needless to say, the golden days of Minecraft Monday are over. Keemstar was recently asked when the event is coming back, and he responded by stating that he wants more people to ask for it back. Although many people were hopeful that Minecraft Monday would return this month, it appears that it won't be returning anytime soon. Now, the community's attention is fixated on other events that are better organized and aren't associated with controversial hosts. Technically, it is possible for the event to return, but only if everyone bands together for the cause. Even then, would the event ever be the same? No trend can last forever. Each trend on the internet must at some point come to an end. It was only a matter of time before we saw the end of Minecraft Monday. Without Minecraft Monday, the internet would certainly be different. Some channels wouldn't have seen massive subscriber growth. A big meme wouldn't have existed. Minecraft tournaments today as we know them wouldn't exist. 
even more than that. Without such big names coming together under the same Minecraft event, Minecraft wouldn't have ever seen as big a resurgence of popularity as we saw happen. So what do you think? Should Minecraft Monday return? Let me know down in the comments. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you'd like to see more documentaries like this, be sure to subscribe. If you hated it, don't forget to leave a dislike. Please follow me on Twitter at SiphonYT. Also, please join my Discord, link in the description. Besides all that, be sure to check out some of my other videos. You can click on the video to the left to see a documentary about ZexyZek, a Minecraft YouTuber who was popular years ago. You can also click on the video to the right for a documentary about the day Minecraft trolling almost died. Anyways, that's it. See ya. Peace.